So let's look at your definition of work here real quick again. Work equals force times? Displacement. Displacement. I'll call delta x, or your book calls it d as well, same diff. Uh, in this case, I like delta x. Uh, in this case, there's your definition of work. Now this definition of work assumes that you've got a constant force though. Turns out the real definition of work, this is a situation definition of work, but the ultimate definition of work is work equals the integral of f dx. How fun is that? You guys like calculus? <laughs> so, yeah, 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 so notice you guys don't need calculus. So, but the idea is this, if your force is constant, if you do know your calculus, you could pull that out in front of the integral, and the integral of dx is just simply delta x, which is where that comes from, x final minus x initial. So, if your force is constant, that's what work turns into. But if your force is not constant, then you can't pull it out in front of the integral, and you'd actually have to take a little more complex integral and stuff like that. Well, if you're a class, you definitely don't have to do that. It's not going to be involved. Question? Wasn't there, wasn't there, isn't there a cosine theta? So, so in this case, you're right. If f is not in the same direction as the displacement, you've got a cosine theta factor in there as well. So in Well, it's not even just taking cosine theta out. In this case, the question you're going to get is either going to be in the same direction as the displacement, or it's not, and they'll let you know. If it's not, include the cosine theta. If it is, though, leave it out, because cosine of 0 is 1. All right, so in this case, I'm going to leave it out. I'm going to just give you a situation where the force and the displacement are in the same direction. Uh, and in this case, um, if your force is variable, then we got an integral to take. Have you guys had calculus? Okay. Yeah. So when you take the integral of something, that's the same thing as finding or determining. So not area. area under the curve. I mean, an integral is an antiderivative, but it's finding the area under the curve. So here, if you're given a graph of f versus position, so, so it turns out taking the integral of f dx would be the same thing as finding the area under the curve, your force curve. So in this case, I've given you a graph with f equals kx, and if you recall, what's that a graph for? So f oh, equals spring. K, a spring. In this case, since usually Hooke's law says not f equals kx, but negative. f equals negative kx. So in this case, this force right here is not the force generated by the spring, but the applied force that's either stretching or compressing the spring. So that's why it's f equals positive kx in this case, equal and opposite force uh, to the force generated by the spring. So there's the graph of it. And if I wanted to find the work done by this force, so in stretching from zero to a position x as given in this problem. So essentially what they're really asking you to do is find the area under that lovely curve. So what shape is this? It's a triangle. What's the area of a triangle? Yeah, one half base times height. And so in this case, if we find the area of that triangle, that will get us our work. So what's the base of that triangle? So, and what is the height of the triangle? It's the force, which happens to equal what as a function of x? Yeah, and so what do we get for the work to stretch that spring to a displacement of x? 1 half kx squared. That should look familiar. Why should that look familiar? That's the potential energy of a spring with a displacement of x. And so in this case, it makes perfect sense that to displace this spring from 0 to a position x, if you're giving it potential energy, the work you're doing is giving it the potential energy, and so it should be exactly the same magnitude. Pretty cool with that? Sweet.